Yeah. Hallelujah. I uh, appreciate very much the invitation. Maybe see you just a moment. Appreciate very much the invitation of coming once again to score two thousand six. Uh it's uh, a distinct honor to be here. I uh, I have been thoroughly blessed, and I have been refreshed. Um, I live in a world of constant pressure, and uh, the body gets weird and weary and tired. And uh, it's good to come and enjoy a little bit the fellowship of friends and wonderful men of God. Thank you very much, Pastor Bass and Sister Bass, for allowing me and my wife to come by. I am very honored to have my wife with me. She's a very special person me, and uh, I, uh, if I had it to do over again, I would marry her again. Uh, if she dies before I do, I will not marry again. It's too much of a risk. You, know, you can't get it, you can't get it twice in a row, you know. So, uh, but uh, if she were still available, I would definitely choose her again. She's been with me through the thick and the thin, and uh, that's, that's saying a lot. Especially from where I come from, it's saying an awful lot. And uh, I, uh, my wife's never asked me for a credit card. She doesn't, doesn't ask me for money. Okay, let's go shopping. That's fine with her. I said, okay, let's go home. That's fine with her. Be sure to get quiet there. I won't. I don't, I don't want to start a revolution. I just. Uh, but uh, I am. Uh, I'm very honored to have her as my wife. I would also like to say tonight before I uh, proceed. Uh, I have here tonight two people that. The men of God that I look up to, that serve as uh, leaders in my life. Pastor Bass is one of them, and Pastor Dana McKillop is the other. And uh, I, they, they help give direction to my life. And uh, I say it publicly and I've told them personally I I need somebody to check me out to keep me straight and right and uh, I would like to say to both of them today that uh, I have tried to live a righteous life uh, I stand behind God's pulpit with a clean heart I don't have any secret wives hidden around. I uh, I hold my head high, not in pridefulness, but knowing that I've tried to do right. I don't uh, don't have any secrets in my life. Don't have any skeletons hidden away, and uh, I have. Uh, I have tried to live as God would expect me to and as these elders would expect me to also. So uh, sometimes it's good to keep the record clear. Uh, I have tried my very best to be the person I'm supposed to be in God's presence. 
I, uh, I don't have any secrets. I don't have any. Uh, I'm, I, my wife says I'm almost too open, and uh, I really am. I, I don't. It's it's me. It's, there's no uh, there's no flash and splash, and uh, it's just what you see is what you get. And, uh, uh, it's, uh, could it be improved though? Yeah, big time. Will it be? I'll try. But meanwhile, I just have my conscience to live with and may the God that guide my life. And so, I want them to know that if the Lord were to come today, I am assured in my heart that I'm ready to go. I'm assured about it. And if I, 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 I try to live that way. I, um, as usual, I, I struggle with my mind and with my self-confidence and everything else about what to preach and how to preach it. And uh, uh, it's. I'm never so self-assured that I can come up and say, hey, boy, I've got it, guys. I've got it. I don't. I don't I've, that's happened so few times in my life until I've had a birthday party the day that that happened. You know, I just, it just doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. I, uh, usually I step up, as even today, I usually step up. I have a half a page of notes. I don't have any notes to give away, Pastor. There's no... There's nothing to give away. So it would be nice if I could, but I don't have anything to give away as far as notes are concerned. It's just, uh, just have to follow after the Holy Ghost and follow after my, the leading of the Holy Ghost. Shall we stand? Um, I don't know if, if you know it or not, but it, it was impressed on me this afternoon. Um, The church of God, the people of God, you play such a fundamental role in the preaching. People don't realize that. You're, a lot of people come to church to hear someone preach. But if, if, if you, if you want to get something out of it, you've got to uh, how can I say it in English? You've got to pull on the pulpit. You've got to, you've got to, you've got to pull on it. I, I, I don't know how to put it any better than that. It's, you, you, you if, if you just sit and look and watch, you'll go empty. There's, there's got to be this, 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 this yearning. There's got to be a, a, a you, you've got to, you've got to pull at it. And if you, if you don't pull at it, and there's people here today, you, you just came just to watch. And, you know, I'm not here to criticize you, but you're going to go the same way you came. Because there's not that yearning inside of it. And uh, even in this meeting, I, I, you, you need to pull. You need, you need to grab a hold. Of, it, it, sometimes it's just a little, 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 little whisper. Of, uh, just, just a little, little small, little, little brush of angels' wings in the service. And you've, you've got to learn how to grab on to that and to follow through with it. And if you do it, if you if you would if you would have just 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 just, 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 just open your heart and just 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 
suck it in. Uh, I, you know, I know my English is poor on that area, but you just, you just, you just have to take it my little way of saying it. But if you do that, you'd be amazed at what God can do in your heart. You'd be amazed at what God can do. You know, sometimes you come to church, and it's not even necessarily the preaching that starts it off. Sometimes someone will come and read a, a little word from the Lord, or 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 a, a verse out of a course, or you know, it's just, it's just some little little some little little thing that that you know, there's just it, ooh, you know, and if you grab onto it right there. Hallelujah. I want you to raise your hands and I want you to pray and ask God to open up your heart tonight. Come on, you got to pull at it. You got to pull at it. Mm. You got to yearn for it. You got to yearn for it. You gotta yearn for it. He la rako shokoti kala rakayate. He la rako roko shokala ramakayate alaraha. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. You just let me do it my way a little bit here today. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I sit down for a moment and we'll work on it from wherever we go. I don't know. The Old Testament closed off in a in a whimper. And four hundred years of silence set in. Four hundred years of no word. Four hundred years of dead old church. Four hundred years of unsolved problems. Four hundred years of You wish unanswered prayers. A incredible accumulation of crash. I don't know 
know if you know what it's like or not, but maybe some of you are coming from that kind of a background, but there's, there's, there's not very many churches nowadays that have a move of God. And years and years and years and years and years of just silence, no answer, nothing, zero. Hallelujah. Four hundred years of nothing. And then one day, and if you'll open your Bibles to the book of Luke, chapter four. Verse 16, and he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed. And if you want a subject of what I'm going to try to get across tonight, the anointing of the anointed. The anointing of the anointed. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. And he hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, and the recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty those that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it back to the minister and sat down. Four hundred years of silence. Four hundred years of accumulated problems. Four hundred years of pain and shame. Four hundred years of sickness that had no cure. Four hundred years of pure hell on earth. Hallelujah. And then one day, just on a regular church day. Hallelujah. Holy Jesus, give me the unction of the Holy Ghost tonight. In through the back door. Hallelujah. Walked in Jesus. And he came in and sat down. Hallelujah. If you wish, on the front pew, however you want to put it down. And God, in his divine way of getting things all together, hallelujah, it was Bible reading day, and it was time to read out of the book of Isaiah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And of all people to choose to give the Bible to read, let me do it my way here today. Hallelujah, the Bible was handed over to him and said, all right, it's your turn to read. And he started reading, and he said, hallelujah, I am anointed to preach, hallelujah, I, oh, loco, shikiti, la, hallelujah, for the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me, hallelujah, oh, Lord, have mercy, he walked into the church building, he said, boys, he said, ladies and girls, he said, I've got the problem solved for you. 
Hallelujah. I walk in here and I've got the authority. I've got the unction. I've got the anointing to come and give you a word from God. And when you open up the Bible, hallelujah, this is what the Lord wants you to hear. Hallelujah. Oh, my God, have mercy. I want you to imagine these people inside of this church service, inside of this building. And here walks in Jesus of all people. Hallelujah. Bringing them a sweet promise of God. Hallelujah. He said he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down. And all the eyes that were in the synagogue were fastened upon him. And he began saying unto them, This day. This day. This scripture is fulfilled in your ears. Mm. One of the most astonishing things I find in, in, in Pentecost nowadays is the power that's in the place and the few results that result from it. Come on, you gotta get with me now. Hallelujah. Don't don't look at me like I'm an animal out of the zoo. Hallelujah. Come on, you gotta get in with it. You got you gotta yearn for the word of the Lord. You gotta believe that God is gonna work for you. Come on, you came to church to hear the word. Okay, let it come in. Let it get in. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord have mercy. Been worried about some of you. You come to church and you sit down and you're just watching. You got big back problems, son. You got big back problems, sister. Hallelujah. And sitting just on that log as if you're not on the log ain't gonna help your soul. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, the word of the Lord is telling you. Hallelujah. There is an anointing of the anointed. Hallelujah. There is a promise of God that can solve out your problems. Hallelujah. You stand as long as you want, sit down when you please. Hallelujah. You see, you see that this 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 anointed one walk into church. Like he's trying to walk in here tonight. I said like he's trying to walk in here tonight. God's been knocking at your door all week long. Hallelujah. But if you're just there, just observe what's going on. You'll never make it, sir. You'll never make it, sister. Hallelujah. You have got to allow God to fulfill his word in your life. You see, these, these, these issues, this, this, this prophecy or whatever you want to put it, this, this, this it, it's, it's focusing in on these, these people like 400 years. You know what really ought to happen when you come to church? You're really supposed to lay it all on the altar and go away. Uh, 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 renewed every service. But you know what happens? People come to church and they walk back out. Amen. With the same load they came in. Next service night, they come back in again. They're loaded down. The same walls more. Because the other one wasn't taken care of. And then you come in and you, get, you come in with another load. You hear what I'm saying? Hallelujah. And so people come to church and they're, they're, they're stooped shoulders, bent over with problems, with unsolved issues, with sadness in their heart. Have you ever noticed how the 
rejoice. Well, hello. Hello. I say I said the joy is, you know, it's getting... People go through the motions. But tell me when you've really seen somebody just slap happy. Don't slap too much, but be happy. Humidity here. Got to have a lot of humidity to keep my lips from cracking and bleeding. Go ahead and walk, Jesus. 400 years. Let me. Are you with me? prophecy here. And you Jesus help me today. You, 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 you understand what I'm trying to tell you? You're here? You know what I'm talking about. Let's just this working percentage. Let's just say twenty percent doing A OK. Probably 70 or 80 percent is in here. Your joy's been sapped. You're here just, just, just barely hanging on. 
And there's a word of prophecy that was given. Today is your day. Today is your day. I've got the answer for you. I've got it for you. You're still not believing me. I've got it for you. I've got it for you. You know, you know, so everyone's just there. Wow. Woo. They haven't broke through, you know, but they're just... Then all of a sudden, some dingbat acts up in the back of the church. And he says, Is this not Joe's son? Hey, hey, wait just a second. This is, this is Joe's boy. Well, it got quiet there, didn't it? I've seen this guy before. And what's so ironic of it, that is, if Jesus had any looks, it would it would have it pulled off of Mary and not Joseph. But all they could see, he really looked like Joseph. And so people come to church when there is a promise in the air. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And they start focusing in on this, 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 well, you know, and so you have got to learn to look beyond the man to see the anointing. If you don't see the anointing, you will never, ever have the answer that you need from God. Hallelujah. I'm coming here in defense of the ministry, the apostolic ministry of God. Hallelujah. If there's ever a time that was needed, men of God, that you could believe in, don't look at the man, but look at the anointing of the man. Because they want to pull the, the, the ministry down to the level that's below the 
anointing. Well, he looks like so. Look at his nose. Look at his hair. He looks like so. So here's Jesus with an answer. Here's the anointed with the promise. And some little somebody says, well, I think he looks like Joe. And immediately, Jesus began speaking because he perceived the spirit that was behind it. Been struggling with this message for days because. I believe there's an answer in this house. But for it to happen in your life, the anointed has got to touch you. So then all of a sudden, after there's this little squeaky voice, so I think he's Joe's son. And they were filled with wrath. And they got up. And then they, as a group, they shoved Jesus out the door to go kill him. Exactly. Went to kill their answer. See, this was the church where they had had 400 years of problems. And so in walks the answer. And they boot him out the door, filled with wrath. Let me just slow down here just a little bit. Let me just slow down here a little bit. If you'll start analyzing this, you'll start noticing that these, 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 this, 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 what Jesus came in to perform for them was to break open this closed-in world that they were living in. These, these broken-hearted, these blind. You hearing what I'm saying? These, these, these poor. That the world is just caving in on them. Right. And when you get over into this, you'll see that, 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 that this church, they had all of it, it was all there. So much so that if there's anything that's really a small world, wrath is an awful small world. Yeah. If you get over there in Galatians chapter 5, all of those works of the flesh, that's all this small world stuff. It's all people that are caving in on top of themselves. They're basket cases. They're spiritual, completely spiritually lost. But you know what? Jesus came into the house knowing exactly what was happening to them. And he passed the answer like he has the answer for you. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 I know it's a struggle here. Hallelujah. You know why? Because you know where I'm going. I'm telling you that there's an answer for you. But it's not going to come your way. Hallelujah. You're going to have to let the anointing of the anointed to fall on you so that God can free you from these bounds that are tying you down. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. If there's ever a time that there's preacher killers, 
Baptists, in church, there's preacher killers in church in every church I go to. And if you're not careful, this starts incorporating. It starts becoming part of their very nature. So here, here's these guys. They say, well, they say, man, this guy speaks really big time stuff. Until someone let the cat out of the bag. So what he looks like, Joe's. And then all this stuff begins spilling out. The very chunk that God came to heal. Hallelujah. God is wanting to do something in your life. People have a hard time believing what I'm saying. But I'm telling you, God can take it all out of your life. I tell you, God can take it all out of your life. That bitterness that's down in there, God can take it out tonight. You hear what I'm saying? God can take it out of your life tonight. You know that little, that little, that, 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 those, those people that just, you know, they just aren't, just aren't happily married. People get so angry because me and my wife, we get along pretty good together. We're happily married. But not everybody is. And some of them are just surviving. Holy Ghost, have mercy. There's an answer for you today. And if you, if you listen to what I'm saying, if you believe in what I'm saying, if you believe in what I'm saying, hallelujah, I'm telling you, the anointed, hallelujah, I've been anointed to preach. Oh, that sad, sad spirit, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, have mercy. God wants to take it out of you. You that can't even smile and press, I tell you, God wants to take it out of you. Hallelujah. If you just can learn to look beyond Joe's voice and see the anointing. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get a flow. Get a flow with it. Come on. You don't need to walk out angry. You don't need to walk out the same way you came in. out of the city and led him to the brow of the hill, if that's the way you pronounce it, where their city was built. They might cast him down. Kill him the answer. Refusing the anointing. Because he looked like Joe. Now, if I can get to where I'm supposed to get, this is what I just got through saying, that little sentence that I just got through saying, because he looks like Joe. Put it in your little memory bank and see if I can get where I'm supposed to get. 
So they pushed him out. And he goes, he goes down the road to another church. Walks in. There's a devil to this man. You see, devil possession, you don't find it in the Old Testament. It showed up in those 400 years of silence. Things started going weirdo. 400 years without God talking to you, son. You're in big, bad trouble, baby. And so there was no devil possession in the Old Testament. But it showed up all of a sudden. Jesus walked in on the scene. When he walked in, second church, there was a devil-possessed man. Woo! And the anointed walked in. Oh, I felt the brush of the Holy Ghost just now. You've been struggling with all those perversions? Ooh, halamaha shatala. You cross dress at home? Ooh, la ha yatayata. I've seen people walk into church and all, all the junk is glued on to them. Hallelujah. Hair, weirdo. It's all, it's all in them. Someone, Pastor Martin or something says about uh, 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 metrosexuals. I know all about transvestites. I don't think about metrosexuals. I wouldn't even know. I guess I would if I saw it. But, hallelujah. And so all of this, all of this is walking into our, are you listening to what I'm saying? All of this is walking into our churches. Hallelujah. It's coming into our churches. And the only answer that there is to all of that is if the church will allow the ministry to, to pour forth its anointing. <laughs> the only way that it will work in your life, hallelujah, is if you'll let the man of God, hallelujah, pray over your soul. If you quit your sin, so boy, hallelujah. Come on, come on, look back, go for it, see the anointing. I'm talking about a ministry that's got the answer of God. I'm talking about a ministry that's qualified. And when he was coming to his own country and taught them in their synagogue, so much that they were astonished and said, Whence hath this man this wisdom and these mighty works? The little old fool cracked up. He said, Isn't this uh, the carpenter boy? 
is not his mother, <coughs> Mary. Doesn't he have some brothers and sisters? And they were offended in him. But they saw Joe and didn't see Jesus. Who am I talking to today? Why has the Holy Ghost laid this so heavily on my heart? Who are you that's here, bound in your anger, your sin, in your temptations, in your pain, in your sickness? Why have you not been healed? Why have you not been healed? What went wrong? Or could it be that you came to church? You enjoyed the message. You couldn't stand the preacher. Or could it be that you were going to do it your way? And you decided to cut the man of God out of your picture. There's an answer in the house here tonight. The deliverer is in the house here tonight. Oh, I feel this so strong. You hear what I'm saying? The deliverer is in the house here tonight. There's a promise in the air. I'm talking about even those little hidden things that nobody even knows about. I'm giving you a promise here today. The Holy Ghost spoke to me. If you'll let the man of God pray for you. If you'll let him anoint you with his anointing. If you'll let this, 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 Holy Ghost, to let the ministry reach into heaven and bring you the answer that you're needing. You can walk away today. Lord, I feel this. Hallelujah. Too many people that are bound. Too many people are tied down. Too many sad sacks in church. Are you hear what I'm saying? It doesn't have to be that way. 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on, come on. You're just watching. There's an answer for you. I'm telling you. I'm, I'm rolling against the tide. Because it's hitting way down there below the belt. I'm rolling against the tide. People don't like this kind of message. Hallelujah. Because it messes with their, with their whole structure. But I'm here to tell you that you can walk away much different than the way you walked in. If you will just blind your eyes to Job's son. You hear what I'm saying? I'm telling you, I'm telling you, there's healing in this place. There's people here that you should have been healed a long time ago. But you just can't believe that another man can pray for you. The prayer of faith that it happens in your life. But if an anointed man of God touches you, I'm telling you, if an anointed man of God touches you, Five more minutes. 
that you just let your faith develop up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John says, stay standing. Don't worry about it. Hallelujah. John chapter 8. Hallelujah. They started this big old debate about who Jesus was. And they said, well, you're, you're, you're the son of a bastard. You're a bastard, son, I guess is the way to put it. You don't even know who your dad is. Always denying the anointing. Refusing to accept the power of his name. Refusing the answer. Preferring to kill the answer. So Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say to you before Abraham, I am. And they took up their stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out the temple in the midst thereof and passed by. Now listen to this. The very next verse. Chapter 9, verse 1. And when Jesus passed by, he saw a man that was blind. So we'll just boot Jesus out. Kick him out. He walks in. The other door. There was a blind man there. Who couldn't see what Jesus looked like. He walked, pushed out one door, walked in the other. <laughs> pushed out one, walked in the other. Hallelujah. Pushed out one, walked in the other. When he walked in the other building, hallelujah, there was a blind man there. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you remember what he said when he walked in that first church? Remember what Jesus said? He said, I'm anointed to open the blinded eyes. That's part of my job. That's what I came to do. You know what it may be? There's another church right down the road here. Hallelujah. I am going to fulfill the promise that I gave. I am anointed. I am anointed. I am anointed to restore the eyes of the blind. And so Jesus, hallelujah, when he had spoken, spit on the ground and made clay of the spittle. And what? What? I'm anointed. Here, I'll give you a little bit of a lunch. I rubbed it in that guy's eye. I said, how were your eyes open? He answered, a man that is called Jesus. Not Joseph, but Jesus. Never heard of Joe's son. But I do know his name is Jesus. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost brushing in this place. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Let me just tell you what the Holy Ghost showed me this afternoon. 
It just dawned on me this afternoon. I was praying. I said, God, I'm trying to get away from this. There's another little message I prefer to preach. Holy Ghost wouldn't let me. Oh, I wanted to preach the other one, but I couldn't. Hallelujah. And it came to my memory. Just, just You know, in Brazil, the Brazilians, they have, they have an unusual way of doing things at times. And we, we have we have the the the, uh, the oil the, the oil of where you know the anointing oil we have it in a drawer you know in the pool. and the Brazilians the saints don't just don't run up there during altar service and, and open up the drawer in the pulpit and we have several bottles of oil and they'll grab one say here anoint me The sign of trust in God's ministry. To allow a man of God to anoint you. The sign of trusting in God's word. To say, man of God, You can go home with your blinded eyes if you want. But the anointing of the anointed brings down and ties you down. Be lado koshat. the Holy Ghost here. I don't apologize for the message because it's what God gave me. Too many people see in Joe not see in Jesus. If you're here tonight and you need an answer from God And you believe that God can do it for you. Through His ministry. I know what you're thinking. Now, oh yeah, that's Joseph. That's your problem. Who should just step up here? Say, Pastor, I've got a need. Got a need. Hallelujah. God bless you. Oh Lord, oh Lord, Come on. Come on. You want you want to be free from that pain in your heart? Do you want those scars in your heart to be healed up? Come on.
the day.